Greetings, Wolf Fox Lord, I'm Wolf coming at you with another episode of Noob Sauce. And here we are underground. And what we're looking at right now is the map area of our spawning location in our temporary base, which is right in this section right here. What I did is I created a map wall. Remember, I originally put the map over here, but I stuck it over here. This is the center point map that we worked on. And then I just went around to the grids around that. And created the rest of the map so if you see this little green dot right here that's this map wall and it indicates where the map wall is located on this map structure and that's all i did was is i just put up item frames all around the center one and then just filled it in so once again you just put that down right click your map into the space and it fits in now be careful with this because if you uh push place your map in and then you click on it again you're going to need to do this you're going to turn the map all right so just keep that in mind guys all right let's get into this episode all right the first thing i'm going to want to do is i'm going to take this diamond pickaxe that i created which has fortune three on it and efficiency four these are the enchants now this is not the first pick i did the first pick i did was uh I think it was this one, if I remember correctly. <laughs> um, yeah, it was on Breaking 3 and Efficiency 4, which is good. But then I got managed to get this one with Fortune 3 on it, which means that when I hit certain ores, such as like Coal, Lapis, Redstone, those that can give me multiples, Fortune 3 helps to increase the amount that I get from each block. That's why I want that enchant. All right, but if I attempt to repair this pick, which is pretty much almost done by doing the trick that we do with everything else, look what happens. I'm actually going to lose those enchants that I have on that pick, so I can't do it this way. But there is a way in which we can repair these picks and increase their enchants without losing them. So I'm going to grab some iron here. I'm going to grab a little extra iron. I'm going to come over here and then what you can do with iron, gold, coal, lapis, redstone, and stuff like that, we can create what's called an iron block, which is just right here, this block of iron, right? So if I go and fill all nine slots with ingots, I can create this block of iron. I need to do this three times like so all right and create three blocks of iron and then what i'm going to do is take these three blocks put it up here and with an upside down t formation like this with the ingots we're going to create this thing called an anvil okay and of course we just got the recipe for the anvil and what the anvil does is allows us to I'm stick it right there yes it makes a clang noise what it does is allows us to repair and even name our stuff. So if I take, uh, let's say, okay. So if I take and put the Unbreaking 3 and the Efficiency 4 pickaxe in here, and then I take and put this one in here, it's going to repair the pick and it's going to join them together and give me Unbreaking 3, Efficiency 5, because I have two, uh, Items that have, both have efficiency four, so it's going to increase that. Efficiency five is the highest you can get, as well as put fortune three, which is the highest you can get on that. Unbreaking three is also the highest you can get for unbreaking. All right, now that gives, that's going to cost me 19 levels. If I switch these, okay, if, showing that I'm going to repair this particular pick with this pick. It's only going to cost me 13 levels to do the same thing. It swaps where the enchants are located in the list. It really doesn't matter. As long as the enchants are there, the item is going to work as needed. But it's going to cost me 13 versus the 19 level. So when you're doing this, flip your things around to see which values will be less it will cost less uh, levels for you. So we're going to repair this pick. I'm not going to name it yet because I want to put mending on it. That's the only other enchant I want for this pick. So once I can get a hold of a mending book or uh, a mending pick, the book is probably more likely. I will also name it. I'll show you how to do that when that comes up. So I now just spent 13 levels on a brand new pick. 
to get almost my big pick. Now, what you can also do when you're enchanting, because I've talked about enchanting books, I fished one up, but it's not mending. If you put this book in here, you can also enchant books that will put enchants on them that you can then put onto items. I do believe that was over in this. I got to get this cleaned up. Uh, yeah, here it is. This is the one I fished up. Okay. This book came with uh, Protection 3, Flame, which is for bows, and in Inficiency 4. Now, I'm going to hopefully try to hold on to this for the Efficiency 4 in case I need it to uh, increase another tool set to 5. Uh, but worse comes to worse, if not, I'll use it for the bow enchant and get it on there. Alright, let's put you back in here for right now. Alright, so we covered how to repair an enchanted tool, create an anvil, and all that good stuff. Now, watch what happens with this. I'm going to pick one single block of this coal right here. Okay, you can actually see now it looks like I'm getting a multiple. I got only two out of that one. Okay, it's no big deal. Let's so we'll go for another one. And then I got four out of that one. So basically what it's doing is it's increasing the percentage chance of a uh, increased drop rate of these type of blocks. Now, why is all this so important? Because with diamond pickaxes, we can get our obsidian, which I showed you a couple episodes ago. But if you don't have access to diamonds, Let's show you how to create a portal by the method of molding. So I'm going to create two more buckets. Okay, I should have a bucket of water in here. Yep. I don't need my axe, so I'll leave that right there. And then I'm going to take this out of my inventory for now. Okay, I'm going to come over to this lava pool right here. I always look around, guys, just to make sure I don't have anything come behind me. Okay, so I'm going to scoop up this bucket of lava. Bam, just like that. And we get our next advancement, right? Hot stuff. Fill a bucket with lava. How easy is that, right? So let's do another one. Okay, we're going to get two buckets. And I'm going to do a third bucket. Why not, right? I'm going to need these anyway. Okay. Now, the whole reason I want to go to the nether right now is not because I actually want to get into the nether. Um, right now, it's, it's kind of dangerous for us to go to the nether. But I do want something that's in the nether so I can start making some of our automated machines. So I'm going to put the portal over here because basically right above us, somewhere... I want to say in here, because there's the stairs, right, is our Crescent Moon Island. So I'm going to put the portal over here as a temporary place, and I will do the simple one. So, because you can create uh, huge portals, but the basic one is, if you use the corner pieces, is 14 blocks of obsidian, or if you cheat the corners, 10 blocks of obsidian. Which is, you see, I don't have any in my inventory, but I have lava. So I'm going to put a bucket of lava there. I'm going to put a bucket of lava there. All right. And then I'm going to take this bucket of water and place it right next to this block, like so. And I'm going to quickly pick it back up. And what did it do for me? It created my obsidian. Remember, flowing water over lava, still lava, will create obsidian. So now that I have my two base levels, all right, I'm going to cover up with my dirt. I'm going to create a box. And I'm going to place my lava in my mold. This is a mold. And then I'm going to use the bucket trick with the water. Just like so. All right, so let's go get some more. Oh, wait, I need that bucket. And finish creating this portal through this molding method. It's going to go there, it's going to go there, and I'm going to take you. Now, I like to use lava for cooking stuff, but considering the fact that I have a huge 
lava pond over in this little section right here. I have lava that I really don't need to have there. All right, so let's make you. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to level up my mold to level number two. Place you in there. Place you in there. Let's form you. Let's form you. There we go. Can't get any better than that. Let's go get some more lava. And we'll have our portal. How easy is this? So if you want to go to the nether right away, you have access to iron and lava. I mean, look, look, look at what you do. You can get right to the portal on day one if you really wanted to with this method. All right, so the lava here, lava there. Form, form. Okay, now we have three levels going up, which is the base mountain that you need. One, two, three. So we got two in the floor and three going up. Now we just have to make the top part. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create the mold up here, like so. All right, let's go get one more bucket so we can have the top formed. Then I'm also going to come over here real quick. Well, no, I won't do that again because I can put this, some of this stuff away. And let's go and make the top of the portal. And up, oh, okay. We're gonna put a lava source there, a lava source there, and then we're gonna go with water, water, and there we go. And then we get to take all the dirt away. I'm gonna, uh, where's my tree? Yeah. I'm just gonna put this up here to make sure. Not that it will form up here, even though the portal should give off enough light that it won't. Clear out the center point. And now we have our unlit portal. So let's go put this stuff away. Let's pick up our flint and steel. And I want to take some cobblestone with me because I want to make some protection for this. All right, so I'll put you all away here. I'm going to reset my bar. Okay. Now I want to take the chance of bringing my fortune pick with me. So because the item I want to grab, to put you back where you belong. Okay, I put everything away. Uh, don't really need the coal. I got a little bit of wood. We'll just take the uh, crafting bench with us. And we need this right here, the flint and steel. Okay. And then I'm going to want some cobblestone. I got some over here. Let's bring a bunch of cobblestone with us. And why don't we form a... Uh, did I have extra stone? I guess I do. Okay. And let's make ourselves another one of these to bring with us so we can sit there. I'm going to grab some extra wood, which I believe is that's redstone. Uh, this one. Yeah. Okay. Then we have a stack of that. And then I think we're good to go for now. Good. All right. That's good enough for now. All right. So. Now, the, the portal that's going to form in the nether will not be in the exact location. Um, when I get in better into showing you how to handle the portals and stuff, you're going to want to know what the coordinates of this part of the portal is. All right, so uh, this is what the coordinates comes into. If you don't use the hood that I have here, if you hit your function three key, okay, to determine your X, Y, Z coordinates is this line right here. I mean, it gives you a bit more because it gives you the points and stuff like that. Uh, but this is your X, your Y, and your Z coordinates. So if you need them, this is where you can find them in the hood. If you don't use the tweak here. All right, so let's uh, take that out. And let's get into the nether. Uh, all you got to do is use your flint and steel and light the portal. Bam, look at that. Simple, easy, and you get these particle effects, these purple particle effects. All right, I'm going to get my sword ready. Oh, you know what? Ah, I'm going to do something here to make myself a little smart before I go through. 
because there are new mobs in there that are very hostile, very powerful at low levels. I'm actually going to take a little bit of my gold here. Five pieces. I'm going to create myself a golden helmet. Okay. I could take four and make boots, but I like the helmet. I'm going to switch out my iron helmet here because there's mobs in the nether. If you are wearing a piece of gold armor, that will ignore you. But if you don't have that on, they will attack you. They're hostile mobs. Yes, they have made the nether a little bit more interesting, if it wasn't interesting enough as it was. Here we go, through the portal for the very first time, we're going to get an advancement, and we are right next to a lava, uh, right next to a lava source, a pool. <laughs> okay, oh, I hear a guest, that crying sound here, that's a guest, which can, shoots fireballs at you and kind of blows up. Now, I, I need to find out, let's, a piece of this. This is another another wreck. Okay. I want to place just temporarily. No, okay. It didn't cause this. Oh, I think it went through the portal. <laughs> it didn't cause this uh, gravel to fall, which means I have a good steady uh, surface underneath here, which is good enough. Magma blocks. Now, this is normally where you would find magma blocks. Okay. Those are pigment. Regular pigment. Uh, they're Neutral unless you attack them. If you attack them, then you get a mass mob. And... Ooh, ooh. Magma cube! And they hurt because they're magma. Ouch. Let's see how much. Oh. Come on. There we go. Okay, now he's a little bit more manageable. Now, mind you, um. These little guys will still actually hurt you because they are living lava. Okay. Oh, listen to those new sounds, man. Wow. Okay, let's see. Now, my gold helmet. Now, look at this. My gold helmet only has a durability 77, and I took two points of damage here with it. So, that's why gold is not really considered a good tool. Oh, mushrooms do grow in, in the nether, by the way. And this is the block that I'm looking for right now. This right here. This is quartz blocks. I'm just going to take a quick look around. And Oh, what's in the lava? They're, those are called striders. If you get a helmet and a carrot on a fishing pole, you can actually use them and trap. Oh, wow. I have a bastion here, too. Oh, man, we're going to be digging into that once I get a little bit better. All right, so anyway, back to these guys. They're zombie pigmen, basically. If lightning strikes a pig in the overworld, this is what it'll create. These guys right here. Zombified pigment. Um, but the other guys, lucky enough, I don't see them. So we're in the clear. A lot of striders and stuff. Oh, there's some of the red tree stuff right there. All right. Well, let's get what I came here so we can get out of here. Um, I also should put up a barrier. All right, so I'm going to take this stuff right here. This course stuff. Normally, you would get one. But if I'm going to use fortune on it, okay, as you can see, the amount that I get is increased. I, should want, I also want some of this quartz, to be honest with you. I mean, not quartz, I mean this um, netherrack. But I'll come back for that. All right, so right now I've got just a little bit better than half a stack just out of that one vein, which is really good. Uh, is there any more quick I can get to without phoning through the lava? Uh, can I get over to that stack? Yeah, it looks like I could. <clears throat> the longer I stay here, the... Oh, okay, I heard it. Somewhere, I think, above us is one of... Is that my I was talking about that you need the gold for? I haven't heard him back yet, but... Okay. Let's secure our portal by using our cobblestone. I got almost a stack, which is good enough for right now. That's, that's enough for a couple of machines. Oh, oh, we have another magma. Can I get some magma cream out of you? He's a medium guy. He's the small guy. And I'm not getting anything out of that, which is all right. Uh, if I had looting on my sword, I could have, uh, have the possibility of that. All right, let's put you over here and let's get you. Let's not do that. By the way, if you right now, it's it's 
tagged in my Q-key. If you hit your Q-key, you throw your tool. But wow, look how close we are to that of a source. Whoa. Alright, and I just lost that piece of the no big deal. And the end piece. This is, by the way, a full 14 portal. The game automatically creates a uh, 14 level uh, portal. A uh, 14 level. 14 block portal. Uh, oh, see now, see how that piece fell? That's what I was looking for. I mean, these pieces are on blocks here. You can see now. You can see that these pieces here are not, and they're going to fall into the lava. So watch. Boom. Look at that. That's what I was looking for to make sure that I didn't fall into the lava because I had gravel right here. All right. So we're going to take up you. Get some free gravel. Ooh. And I hit the man. Uh, cover. I'm joking with the wrong thing. Do, do, do. And all I'm doing is basically I'm going to create a box around this so that I can keep it defended because a gas can come along, spit out a fireball, and destroy, well, not necessarily destroy the portal itself, but um, stop it from functioning. It'll break the, the, the enchant part of it, the magic part of it, or, you know, however you want to describe it. Alrighty, so let's make a box right here. And this way, it'll keep me from falling into the lava. Because if the gas hits these netherite rocks, it'll destroy them and I can fall into the lava. So I'm also ensuring the safety of my character from falling. Okay. So, oh, by the way, what I did there, since I was out of my inventory and I knew I had some more in, if you use your scroll wheel and click your scroll wheel, it'll select the box, uh, block, that you're pointing at. That's what I did there. Okay, so. Alright, let me finish this box off, and then we'll go back to the overworld. <laughs> Alright, so I've got the box all formed around. Now, normally I would make the floor out of half slabs to prevent anything from spawning on the inside, but I just wanted to get the box up and running uh, and then I get my other stuff in here. So I generally try to leave next to my first portal the uh, crafting bench. I'll leave this over here so I can use a stone cutter. And I'm going to make a chest right here and put it on top there. Because I always try to leave my flint steel next to the portal because if the portal happens to go out, I'll have a flint and steel here so I can create the portal again and go back home. Otherwise, if you don't have a way of lighting this portal, um, the only way to go back home is to die. So, all right, so we are in the port, uh, the, we are in the nether. We've got the one item that I wanted, the quartz. Look at all these guys starting to form here. Okay, and then I'll explain more of this once we actually delve more into the nether side of things. Let's go home, shall we? So, okay, so I've got the portal, I've got it covered, and I've got the stuff here. We're good. All right. So we have officially go into the nether. I believe we got an answer to that. Let's bring that up. Yep, we need to go deeper. Build, light, and enter a nether portal. So we did that. So we repaired our enchanted item, and we molded a portal, and we went to the nether and collected quartz. So now I have the components that I need to start making some redstone machinery. Now the first one I'm going to create doesn't actually use redstone dust, but it does use redstone components, and it's the first redstone contraption anybody can make. So I'm going to take back some of that iron that I left there. All right. And I'm going to go and create... Oh, let's actually do... 
16, and I'll get a full stack out of that, which is 64, and I want to create eight chests out of that. I'm going to go over here to the redstone tab, and in here you can see this item right here. It's called the hopper. This is redstone components, by the way. All right. I'm going to create three of these, one, two, and three, just like so. Alrighty, and then I'm going to go back over here to the tool tab, essentially. Now I'm going to create a furnace, All right. a regular furnace for now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find a location to put this in. Let's see, ah, uh, because that's got the water. I'm going to probably build some more of this up. Oh, yeah, since this is going to be a simple one, let's do it over here next to the flower. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down two chests like that, back to back. All right, now, if you only want one and one, what you can do is you place your chest down, hit shift, and place another one, and there'll be separate chests just like this, okay? But I want them to get, I want them joined. I want it to have a full inventory. Then I'm going to take this item, this hopper, I'm going to shift, because you have to when you're dealing with this, otherwise you're going to open it, and place the hopper so that the bottom portion of this hopper is facing into the chest like so. If I place it down on the ground, it faces downward. All right, and then, of course I don't want that. I want this hopper, which is going to collect items that is cooked in, uh, from this furnace and place it into this hopper. So then I'm going to place this first right on, you have to shift click because otherwise you'll open up the inventory for the hopper, which has these five slots, by the way. I'll put the furnace on top, just like so. And then on one of the sides, it doesn't matter, one of the four sides, I'll choose this one. I'm going to put another hopper right there. Once again, you got to squat in place so that the, the little nubby thing goes into the side of the furnace. Then I'm going to put one on top of the furnace like this so it points down into the top. So what happens is, is this one that's connected to the side will feed this lower part right here. This hopper will feed the top part of the furnace. All right, And then the hopper that's underneath will take the items that are crafted here and pull it out and store it into this location right here. Now, technically, I'm already done. This is a simple smelter, all right? It's not an array or anything, it's just a simple smelter. But I can take my last couple chests, I'm gonna put a single one up here, because that's my fuel source, and then up on top, I'm gonna place a double chest because that will match what I have down here. So what I'm gonna do next, let me eat a little bit here, guys. Okay, I'm going to take, uh, Give me this one for right now. I mean, I'll fill all three. All right. Give me the buckets. Now, a bucket of lava will actually cook 100 items. Okay, remember when I told you that coal and charcoal will cook eight uh, sticks and wood and stuff like that? Can potentially only cook, I think it's uh, one to three or something. I forget exactly what the count is because I use lava pretty much all the time anymore. All right, so I want to grab a bunch of this stone because what I want to do is I want to create um, this right here, regular stone, okay, for uh, for building. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my stone in there. I'm going to fill up my hopper. Now, actually, what I could do is, here, I'll take that out real quick. I can just simply put it here in the chest just like so, right? And you see that it's disappearing because this hopper is pulling out of this chest you know, whatever source material is in there, and it's filling it in here. So this is how the hopper system works. If it has something above it, it'll pull it out. If it has something below it, and it's able to, it'll put something in. All right, so if I take that out of that first, look what happens. I took a half stack out. And it's going to fill it all the way up to its full stack potential. And I'll just put that up there for now. Oh, already. Why not just stick that in there? Okay, so now how are we going to do this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all three of these buckets and put it in. Now look what happened. The furnace lit up. See? So now this bucket of lava, which is actually down here, because it takes the lava out and puts it into the cooking field. This is a bucket of lava that's waiting to cook more items, and this is one in the hopper that's waiting to fill this slot to continue cooking. So this continually cooks everything, and I don't have to be here to collect and, you know, store stuff in. It'll do it all automatically, all right? 
And uh, remember, this will cook 100 blocks. So try to have 100 blocks in here if you can. And that's that's our first redstone item that we created. Uh, you know, our first machine. All right. And that's the whole reason why uh, in the last couple of episodes I did the, the diamond, the enchanting, and I got the portal going. So we can start working on getting some redstone machines to help us do our job here so we can actually get to building stuff. Now, I could have been building stuff right from the get-go, but I try to get resources and everything like that up ahead. Um, as you can see, I usually dig myself in in all nice areas so I don't have to deal with the mobs sometimes. Unless I want to, then I go out and fight them. Um, how you choose to play the game is entirely up to you. This is just one method to show you how you can survive and increase your resources as a survival builder. All right, guys? All right, well, I think we've done enough for this episode. Let's get out of here and then see what else we can do. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for subscribing. You pups, take care now. Bye.